Hello guys, Matt here and welcome to my fragrance obsession. I hope you're all doing very, very well today. Now, tonight I thought I would do a last minute review on a fragrance which I truly believe is underrated and to be honest with you, I cannot believe it doesn't get talked about more than me. <laughs> now, I'm the only one that's reviewed this fragrance still to this day and this fragrance has been in my collection for probably about a year and a half now. Um, the first time smelling this, I instantly fell in love, and this has definitely become one of my favourite fragrances of all time. The fragrance is called Orbison Hong. Now this fragrance was introduced in 1992, and it comes from a company called Orbison, or simply known as Daniel Orbison. Now Parfum Daniel Orbison was a company, a French company, which actually is not running anymore. And if you can find a lot of their fragrances, they're actually known as vintage, they're actually known as gems. So, just so you know, a lot of their fragrances are discontinued, including this fragrance right here. Now, in 1984, the company made their first fragrance, which was a women's fragrance known as Histoire d'Amour. And Histoire d'Amour actually remains a very favouritised fragrance from the company, and it's known as the company's greatest creation still to this day. Now, a lot of their men's fragrances don't really get a lot of mentions. In 1988, there was a fragrance called Futuros, which does not get talked about. And then this fragrance, the signature fragrance for men, Orbison Home, still does not get talked about to this day. In my opinion, I think that this fragrance is certainly a hidden gem within the fragrance community. I would highly recommend you all hunt down a bottle of this fragrance right after I've done this very exclusive review. Now, just so you know, I have actually already done a review on this fragrance, which you can watch right here. Uh, however, this time I want to go into a little bit more detail, a little bit like I did with my review for Balenciaga Poron. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy this fragrance review. I just want to say sit back, enjoy this review. Here we go with the presentation. Now, since I own this fragrance in two sizes, this is my 100ml and my 30ml is right here, but I'm going to show you guys my 100ml Alita bottle. Now, this bottle design is indeed very, very unique, but what I really like about it is the fact that it just, it looks so retro and it does look a little bit dated, but I really like that about this fragrance. We get Orbison Home up here in silver writing, then we get Eau de Toilette underneath. We get this sort of brown stone effect, which looks really cool, and it's one of those sort of designs which it looks the same no matter what way you view it, which I really like. The cap is silver, it is made of metal, and we also get this really nice emblem on the top here, which I'm guessing is the emblem of the Orbison company. We get nothing on the back, we do get a sticker on the bottom, Orbison Home Paris, 83% volume. The atomizer looks like this, a pretty decent atomizer if I'm honest with you, I'll spray it in a sec when I talk about the smell and whatnot. And the juice is kind of like a dark sort of brown color obviously through this glass it is green frost frosted glass so it does gonna it is gonna show as a darker green but as you can see the juice is darker than the actual bottle itself very dated looking I, I just absolutely love it the box looks like this I would show the box first I do apologize but here's the box right now we get this sort of really retro looking box I do like it we get this brown effect on here then we get this stone effect down here which looks like a green stone and we get this design which is actually the same as the bottle design on the top, which you can see right there. We get Orbison Home Eau de Toilette Natural Spray, and then we get 100 millilitres Parfums Orbison down there. So that is pretty much it with the presentation. Now let's get on to the whole point of this review, which is the smell. Here we go. Now the smell of this fragrance is still, to this day, one of those fragrances which I cannot stop smelling every time I spray it. What I really like about this fragrance is the fact that it is actually a close, close copy to my favorite powerhouse fragrance of all time which is the one and only Balenciaga Pour Homme. Here's my review for it guys if you're interested. And this is simply known as the only fragrance which is actually known as a close copy to that scent. I mean there are others if you look, I mean not as close as this, but there are fragrances like Kouros by Yves Saint Laurent and also fragrances like Lapidus Pour Homme. But to me this fragrance is a hidden gem and I cannot wait to talk about the smell. So here we go, let's start with the top notes. Now the top notes for Orbison Hom are aldehydes, artemisia, juniper berries, green notes, mandarin orange, basil, lemon, and apple. 
So, okay, here we go. This fragrance starts off a little bit harsh, a little bit strong, but when you smell this, you get this very beautiful Artemisia, very nice juniper berry note, and what to me smells a lot like apple. So the apple note in this fragrance, super dominant. It kind of creates this juicy apple mixed with a sort of pastry smell. I know a lot of you are thinking, what, apple pie? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, this fragrance invokes the smell of apple pies. And to me, I don't think there's a better fragrance out there that really does that. Starts off smelling a little bit woody, has a bit of a smokiness to it. A little bit leathery as well, a little bit earthy, a little bit herbal. But to me, the highlight of the opening in this fragrance is that mix between the Artemisia and the apple. Oh, it's so, so amazing, guys. You do get a bit of lemon and you do get a little bit of that mandarin, but to me, the strongest note in this whole fragrance, by a long mile, is that apple note. So if you like apple, you're really gonna like this, but just know that the apple note in this scent is blended in a very classic way. Obviously it comes from 1992, where we were sort of coming away from the powerhouse genre, you know, where we had a lot of the powerhouse scents in the, in the 1970s and in the 1980s. In the 1990s, there was still a lot of powerhouse scents, but calling this one a powerhouse isn't quite right. I mean, it's a strong scent, it definitely has the boldness and the character to, have to be a powerhouse scent as soon as you spray it. But to me, there's definitely more in there. There's more in there which really proves to me that it's not just a powerhouse scent, if that makes sense. The aldehydes note in this fragrance definitely makes the apple stronger. So, like I said, if you like the note of apple, you're definitely going to love this fragrance without a doubt. The middle notes for Orbis and Hom, we get Cyclamen, Carnation, Fir, Cinnamon, Jasmine, and Geranium. So, I think what really makes this fragrance delicious is that it is definitely that cinnamon note. Um, as soon as you spray this fragrance, you get that apple, but after it's been on your skin for about five minutes, you get this delicious, spicy cinnamon. And to me, I don't know about you guys, but the note of apple and the note of cinnamon just go so well together. It creates this sort of Christmas smell. It reminds me of the smell of, you know, those Christmas diffusers, like the mulled wine or the apple and cinnamon ones that you can buy and you plug them into your wall and they let off that smell. To me, that's what this smells like. And I don't even think that this fragrance is meant to invoke Christmas whatsoever. But to me, I definitely do get that without a doubt. It's like that, that combination between the apple and the cinnamon is just gorgeous. And with, with that fur note, it just makes this fragrance smell so warm and so invigorating, you know? But at this point, it's still masculine. It's still got this sort of rugged feel to it. So. Yeah, beautiful. It's rugged, it's a little bit too masculine, but it's ha but it definitely does have a very classy edge to it, without a doubt. And in terms of the dry down, guys, we get the notes of labdanum, leather, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, musk, and oak moss. So this fragrance on my skin lasts for, sometimes it lasts for about six hours, sometimes it lasts for a good eight to nine hours. And the only way it lasts longer is when I use like uh, unscented hand lotions and then use the fragrance that's the only way this fragrance lasts so in terms of its longevity you know it could be a lot better but I think in terms of the smell this fragrance is just so high quality that there is just nothing like this out there um, apart from Balenciaga Pour Homme of course but to me this one just is different all on its own it starts off smelling like apple pies with a nice leather in it and then dries down to smelling like Balenciaga Pour Homme very, very, very strange. And I think in the dry down, what you really get in this scent is that sandalwood, amber, and a little bit of that leather, just creating this very nice soft base. I just think that this fragrance is phenomenal. And the fact that it's getting harder and harder to find is the main reason why I have a big ball and a little ball. I mean, I got this ball first, and then I ended up moving on to a bigger ball. And I only paid like 20 pounds for this during a time where there were some available online. But guys, if you can find this fragrance for fairly cheap online, I would so highly recommend it, especially if you're looking for a classic vibe, a retro vibe and a fragrance, and just something that smells so unique. It's absolutely beautiful. A, a, just a lovely, warm cinnamon apple combination. Absolutely gorgeous. I would highly recommend it. So guys, thank you all so much for watching my review. My hair is an absolute mess. I've just realized I look like Conan O'Brien. I'm going to go now because I'm making a fool of myself. <laughs> so guys, keep smelling good and bye-bye for now.